I'm delighted to say I'm joined by Morris Shanahan. Morris is speaking on behalf of Pieta House's Darkness into Light Appeal, proudly supported by Electric Island. Uh, Morris, how are you getting on? Uh, good, sir, yeah. No fear of me, way. Good stuff. <laughs> I know, it's hard to do at times. You've, you've obviously had your own internal battles over the years, and I was just looking over some old articles you did, and like you had a particularly tough time. Would you, would you mind delving into that and why this appeal is so important to you? Yeah, I suppose, I suppose back in um, kind of 2014, I suppose, um, just things kind of got on top of me a small bit, you know, and I suppose before I kind of knew it, I was kind of suffering with depression. And to this day, I still couldn't tell you what brought it on, to be honest with you, but I was kind of out hindered and that kind of thing at the, at the start of January, February in 2014. I suppose it's not the same being kind of inter county threatening with the lads and you're kind of injured, you're kind of away in inside the gym while all the lads are outside running and running in the muck and that kind of stuff and that's where you get the that's where you get the camar camaraderie and all that kind of from change, you know. But I kinda of missed all that kind of stuff and I suppose to kind of just roller course around me to be honest with you. I was kind of it's kind of when I was going down training with the lads and that kind of stuff, I just wanted to drive myself. We normally drove myself, Tommy Ryan and St. Foy's would normally car share, but I just wanted to be on my own going down the road and that kind of stuff. So I was making excuses with them kind of lads saying, I'll drive. I could have. Go in there and try to put a brave face on and train with the lads and you're crying coming back the road and then the minute you come home from training and you're locking yourself away into the room and that kind of, that's the way I, I was kind of that's the way I was roller coaster on me Shane to be honest with you and it took it took a long time for it to change because I didn't want to really open up on it either I didn't want to kind of go downstairs to my mother or father or tell my brother or sister I see you coming on me then I suppose a month down the line they could they knew there was something wrong with with me, you know, they could see it. And I suppose I, I was kind of making excuses about going train and that kind of stuff, making excuses about going to work and I didn't want to do I didn't want to do anything really, to be honest with you. And I suppose Dan kinda of, Dan and my father kinda of seen it with me saying, What is it like and I, I just kind of, I didn't kind of say nothing. I said, I'd be fine. It's just going through a bad patch, that kind of stuff. But I suppose the bad patch kind of took off then and it rolled across for me. And I suppose, thankfully, thankfully, my family could see that. And thankfully, they were there every step of the way. And I eventually, eventually opened up to them, you know. Yeah. And obviously, people say the more you talk about this, the better. And other people can be open about it and not internalise these battles. But you did an interview on WLRFM around 2015 and you were you said, I got home on Sunday evening and I took an overdose. Can you try and explain the, the mental state you'd be in to, to do that? Yeah, that's it, Shane. I suppose that evening, I can still kind of remember big times, you know, and I suppose I say, I said there's more to the challenge game that morning and I went to the game at Dan even and he dropped me back to Lismore and I remember going into the local pub in Lismore, it would have been the J pub and there was a championship game on but I was only having a Lucas out with the lads to be honest with you and I was in there watching the game with him and I went home that evening and I, going up the road I kind of said to myself there's no way out of this like I kind of, I was kind of a zombie to be honest with you, I was kind of, I was watching the match but I didn't even know where I was nearly, to be honest with you, you know, in the round, I wasn't talking to anyone, I wasn't in the conversation or any of that kind of stuff, and geez, I, re I still remember like, walking up the road that evening and into the house, and my mother, my mother and father were downstairs in the sitting room, I went in there for maybe a minute or two and walked up the stairs, and I was lying in the bed maybe for an hour, and I kind of said that there's no way out of this for me, like, and... I went downstairs and inside one of the presses, my mother had um, paracetamol. Thankfully, there are paracetamol, I suppose. If there are anything stronger, we might be here to tell the story. But I, I remember just taking handfuls of them, going back up, 
and saying, oh, it wasn't kicking in and take going down, taking more handfuls and more handfuls. And I even went out the back of the house where my father had the same. And um, I was like, is there anything I could even drink or anything like that? And to be honest, I drank washing, washing powder, that kind of liquid. And Jesus, it burned the throat off me, to be honest with you. But I remember I walked back in and my father came out of the sitting room and he kind of said, um, he said, you're doing wicked up and down. He said, are you all right? And I said, yeah, yeah. I said, I'm just, just up and down. I said, in and out, that kind of th- way. But, and I remember I went back upstairs and my sister, Pauline, was, I don't, don't know what she at home, but I, at around half 11, I text her. And they, they kind of all knew I was struggling at that time anyhow. But I text her and I can, to this day, was it a cry for help or was it that, you didn't want your mom and dad walking in on you above. I don't. I, I still can't really say saying to be honest with you. But thankfully, I'm here to tell the story. But I remember texting Pauline, and all I said on the message was help. So, and I can remember the phone ringing downstairs. And after that, my, my mother and father flew up the stairs, and I can really I can remember small things after that. But Jesus, like my mother, my mother and father were just. They didn't know what to do, really. They were sticking their fingers back in my throat, trying to make me get sick and all that kind of stuff. And and then, I suppose, neighbours and that kind of... When I, I was leaving that day, leaving that night in a wheelchair, and you'd be kind of dazed, but the amount of people that were kind of on the stairs in my house, I was like, Jesus, what am I after doing here, kind of, to myself? And to be honest, I went down into hospital and... They kind of washed me out. I was just puking and puking and that kind of stuff. And I still remember my mum and dad at the bedside and my sister, Sharon, drove down after him. And uh, I can remember to this day still saying, I still don't want to be here. Like, I still, and I was just after doing that and I said, I don't want to be here. And they were like, what do we have to do for you? And this kind of thing. And... It wasn't what they could do for me, to be honest, Shane, because they couldn't do anything really for me. And my dad, my dad at the time was battling cancer as well, and he had his own battles, and he, he was very sick with it at the time, you know, and Jesus, looking back now, I was saying, wow, like the amount of pressure I was kind of putting on him as well, kind of with his own battle. But thankfully, he got the all clear six, seven months later, and, and uh, he's still healthy as ever now. But Jesus, looking back now, you'll be thinking, what what I did put my parents through and my family through and my friends through, but at that time I thought there's no other way to be honest. Mm. I thought I was, I actually thought I was doing a favour, Shane, to be honest. <laughs> and that is something you commonly hear. Do you have you ever been able to put your finger on what it might have been that that made you feel so bad, or is it something you can put your finger on? No, I can't. I can't to be honest with you, and that's uh, that's something that kind of bugs me at times as well, you know. But it's kind of. It was kind of like being injured a lot and like I was kind of on the water panel maybe three or four years and I wasn't really kind of like growing up. It was kind of, it was kind of waiting until this fella comes onto the scene, that kind of stuff, like he explodes onto the scene. And I wasn't, it was, geez, I wasn't exploding at all, to be honest with you. And um, like, then you, like, and matches you you hear people abusing you and all that kind of stuff and you know, it's not a nice thing it's not a nice saying every hurler every sports person knows it's all part of it but it kind of hit home with me differently to be honest it would hit home it would hurt me i wake up five in the morning after matches the first thing i do is check the lights of twitter check newspapers seeing are, are people saying bad things about me that kind of stuff that's the way i was and Thankfully, kind of Derry kind of got that out of me a bit, you know, and and now I don't look at him at all, really, to be honest. And but I was kind of putting a lot of pressure on myself, saying you're not, you're not kind of developing into an intercounty hurler, and then you're having doubts. Are you good enough to be an intercounty hurler? Because going out with my club, I I was playing, suiting the lights out every year, kind of. And then when you're going on play water, you're kind of saying to yourself. Why isn't it happening? Why isn't it happening? But I suppose 2014 and 2015, 
unfortunately for Porrick, he broke his leg. And I mean that, like, I got an all-star that year, and I probably, probably would never got an all-star, Shane, if Porrick didn't break his leg, to be honest with you, because I got the confidence hitting the freeze and that kind of stuff. And I think, though, no, I think in 2014, I had a picture on my head, anyhow, that 2015 was going to be a good, good year. I trained wicked hard. I had, I was saying, what I went through last year, things will turn for you this year, that kind of stuff. And thankfully, it did. I suppose, like, Sam Poirier broke his leg. He'd done his crucial last year. And Stephen got him last time. You know, things work out for people. And, well, I'm not going that, but only for him getting injured in two years, probably, we said for Stephen might not have lost that. We might, but we might not either, you know. Mm. And I know you're very short on time, so I'll just sum up with a quick one. I'd love to talk to you longer in the future, and hopefully we can. Yeah. But like, it, you know, one year you're you're feeling very poorly, and obviously things went the way they did, and you and you you know you took an overdose. The next year you win an all star, but it's not as simple as that. You flip a page, and all of a sudden you're better. What what advice would you have to people who are suffering? Yeah, definitely, Shane. It wasn't. I suppose. I suppose I was. Um, Connor Cusack, I suppose, got in touch through a family member. Julie Landers kind of got me in touch with Connor Cusack. And I suppose to this day, when I heard that he wanted to have a, have a chat with me, I wasn't really talking to many people, to be honest with you, because I kind of said I'm a sports person and that kind of stuff, and other people don't get it. But the minute Connor He's a sports person, and when he came down to talk to me, I took it all on board, and it helped me. It helped me big time. But the one advice I would give now, and I, I probably didn't even do it myself, but it, it is to talk to someone, to talk, pick up the phone, ring, ring your brother, ring your sisters. But some people find it hard to do that. Then, to if it's a family member, to ring and to ring a friend, even. Counseling, saying I went to counseling for a few months, I suppose. And to this day, if I felt I, I needed to go, I can ring someone and book an appointment and go go to a counseling appointment. And things like that really helped me, to be honest with you. And you can say what you, you have to say to them people because they can't repeat it, to be honest with you. Do you know, and it's it's absolutely fantastic that that service is out there. And I suppose, again, the GPA would have helped me out big time. Mm -hmm. Get me counsellors, get me that kind of work, get me meeting people, that kind of stuff. It helped me big time, man. Kind of anything I needed, kind of from the GPA I got, like, so I can't thank them enough either. Okay. Well, look, I really appreciate it, Morris, and hopefully we'll get to chat a little bit longer um, in, the, in the near future. Yeah, no bother, Shane, anytime, mate.